I think uh, the reason why it's happening is uh, banks are, are threatened f from not the other banks, but from the technology companies, which we believe that uh, could do far better than what banks are doing in terms of technology. So banks are now, actually banks are becoming technology companies if you look at it, okay. yeah? And that's where uh, they need to come up with something that keeps their customer to themselves. Uh, and giving a digital platform, you know, mobile was a good start. You can do a lot of things on the mobile, but then I think the logical extension to that was to give out everything that a customer does uh, in his bank uh, himself. So that's where I guess the digital, and that's where the world I believe is moving, that you do everything yourself from wherever you are. There is no straightforward uh, definition to what a digital banking is. Some people think digital banking is doing banking on the computer. Some people think it is an extension of internet banking. Uh, some of us, we say uh, it's a bank in your pocket. Uh, so I don't think there is a straightforward uh, definition to that. But uh, every, all the bank has different ways to look what they want to provide in a digital bank. I think digital banking is a term but then people use this term in different ways, uh, depending on how capable the bank is technologically. I think uh, Kenya has done very well in mobile, uh, especially the mobile financials, uh, where you s start doing transactions on the mobile device. Um, and if you look at it, the competition actually started with uh, financial institutions and non-financial institutions. So uh, a mobile operator, for example, uh, any other fintech company is now coming up with solutions. And more and more, uh, uh, what is happening uh, is, uh, is uh, banks are just becoming, uh, what is a bank? I mean, if you look at it, what is a bank? Bank is just an, as we move forward, the bank is just going to be an institution with a legal license to transact money. Beyond that, I don't think bank has anything else to offer. Uh, uh, and what fintech companies don't have is we have everything, but we don't have the banking license. So in some countries, uh, especially in some of the Western countries, fintech companies are allowed to do banking. In Kenya, I think uh, the trend is a bit different where the banking banks are, uh, are partnering with fintech companies and fintech companies are partnering with the banks to come up with solutions that their customers need. Um, I think there's also fundamental shift that is happening at the moment. Uh, and the difference is, I think the banks would, uh, anytime a bank wants to launch a product, they would actually do a PNL before. Then is this product going to generate revenue for me? And if they feel that it's going to generate, they go out in the market and launch those products. While a FinTech company does the other way around, we go and launch something, then figure it out how to make money. Now, you see, both of them are extreme. One is on this side, the other one is on this side. So I personally believe that when a fintech company and a bank gets together, we meet somewhere in the middle so that I think it's a win-win for, for everyone. <laughs> very, very difficult to say because I think such uh, things have not happened in the past, so we don't know which is the better approach. Personally, if you ask me, a fintech company getting into a bank possibly may be better. And the reason I think is fintechs are normally risk takers. So if you come in with a risk taker, risk taking uh, DNA, I think then the growth might be better. Because mm -hmm. if you come in from a bank getting into a uh, into fintech, it will always have a conservative nature which might hinder the growth. You know, two years back, one and a half year back, if we would go to a bank and say, we want to launch this uh, technology product, they would like it, but the approach would be a bit conservative. Uh, now, as we speak now, banks have literally opened up. Um, you go in with a new product, they are willing to try out. They are willing to take risk on it. And we also, have, we also work with some banks where now they are saying they want to put a specific budget 
just for launching out these kind of products and even if that means that these products doesn't generate any revenue they know this money is only for you know r and d purpose mm -hmm. so i believe it's i think we live in very very interesting times our journey started with co banking platform so we started erp platform for banks uh, uh, for their for their day to day operations then went into microfinance uh, currently we serve many banks on the continent we serve uh, i think highest number of microfinance on the continent and then in the journey we realized that look the future is is going to be different so we then got into uh, the digital uh, platforms very early actually you know if you look at uh, the the past we might be the first guys to come up with agency banking we might be the first guys to come up with uh, the mobile apps on the phone in the country uh, because we believe that's where the platform is going that's where the market is going and we now see that uh, what's going to happen is is banks are going to be just a channel for, to do a transaction so that's where now we are also moving uh, we serve close to about uh, 300 customers as we speak uh, all across the continent uh, not just in africa but it also in parts of asia in terms of processing the transactions i think we are the second biggest after uh, safaricom mpesa processes the largest number of transactions in this country followed by them is us uh, but the only difference is we are a white label uh, solution provider so when you are doing transactions on your bank most likely those transactions are processed by us but you as a consumer do not know because we are sitting at the back yeah and 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 i think we 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 always want to be in forefront of uh, innovation every time we keep doing something new some of them succeed some of them don't succeed that's right in our dna okay you must understand why we launch little um little is not a taxi hailing app L little is just one of the pillar that sits on a massive payment gateway you know us as craft silicon we have a massive massive payment gateway we process transactions from for schools for utility companies for revenue authorities for counties we process lots and lots of transactions i have close to 10 million customers sitting on my platform from various different uh, partners now once i have this platform what can i do next you know i need to go a step further so we are now building the verticals so the first vertical we thought was let's focus on transport and logistics that's where the little came in so little is just a platform uh, an app that uses our platform so you can book a little you can pay for a little you can pick the money from your bank and book a ride for example the second uh, platform that we are currently uh, focusing on is hospitality so we recently did an investment in one of the biggest food aggregator uh, in the region and then we are also plugging them into our, our ecosystem and lastly we are also getting into the health sector so all these things what happens is we are all we are doing is taking up a funnel that sits on our payment gateway and from our payments we now take it to the banks and any places where we can pick the money because that's i think where the future is uh, more rich your ecosystem is it will be good for people mm -hmm. so little was our first experiment um, i'm very happy that it is going extremely well we are doing lots and lots of ride we have close to 2500 drivers on the platform and all these drivers have their financial needs so obviously that will now drill down to our customers the next thing that we believe you know because now digital banking is 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 almost there the next thing big thing that we believe is going to come into the banking is uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning so we are we are investing heavily us as craft silicon we are investing heavily into machine learning and what machine learning is is uh, it doesn't look at your figures on how you do but it look, looks at your patterns you know you as a retail customer or a corporate customers it analyzes your patterns on how you transact what time you transact what you do so it's not transaction by transaction but it's patterns and based on that patterns the machine will be able to learn what you are likely to do next 
uh, that I think is going to be the next uh, uh, thing in the banking and we are right there, you know, Kraft Silicon is investing heavily in machine learning as we speak. Data analytics is actually looking at the figures, where you look at the figure, how much, what is the turnover of a customer, for example, how much is he spending month by month, and based on that you make a decision. Uh, on artificial intelligence, you don't actually look at the figures, but you look at the patterns, you know. Uh, if you like a red shirt, that doesn't mean, that might mean that you also like a red shirt with, you know, stripes on it. Now that's a pattern while red is a number. So there is a difference between analyzing a number and analyzing a pattern. And mach machines can actually learn a lot from uh, learning the patterns. And once you have a pattern learned, then I think you start building out uh, internet of things. You know, can we, can we start binding his patterns to something uh, uh, physical where he can interact? Uh, the machine learning definitely is easy. Uh, there we see the cases where it will be helpful. Uh, in terms of Internet of Things, we are still trying to figure out how uh, it will help the financial institutions. But be sure, whenever that comes in, Kraft Silicon will be the first company to come up with something.